soothe and inflame your senses. Call Lily Escorts. Even the fear of AIDS hasn't killed off America's love affair with sex. Meet Melissa. She's proud to be promiscuous. She doesn't worry about practicing safer sex. It's the same story with Jenny and Jim. They've slept with hundreds of people outside their marriage, but they don't use condoms. Alan already has the AIDS virus, but it hasn't stopped him from running sex orgies with close to 200 men a night. And Vanessa says every day married men beg her to have sex without a condom. She's a prostitute who works the streets of New York City. Today, reckless sex in the age of AIDS. We're starting with Melissa and Rachel, who have had dramatically different reactions to the AIDS crisis. And let me start with you, Melissa. You are sexually active. Yes. How sexually active are you? Um, very. I'm very sexually active. Um, I don't know, one, two, three different partners a week. And so that means over the last year, we're talking... About 27 different people in the past 12 months. Now, how well do you know these people? Um, not very well. I can meet them at a bar, um, post office, dental office. Um, if something in them strikes me and I feel compelled to sleep with them, I'll bring them to my house. Now, <laughs> the audience is already <laughs> reacting. Do you, think, do you think you have a problem at all because of this behavior? A problem meaning... Um, Meaning what? It's, it's not a problem to have sex. Um, the problem is if you're not protecting yourself or whatever. That's what people see as a problem. Um, I'm comfortable with the way that I am. It's the way that I am. Um, and there's nothing that can change that because I, I, I don't want to change that. I'm comfortable like this. So you're happy because you what? Really love sex that I much? I love sex. I love the hunt. I like to hunt down the men and get them in bed. That's what I like. Well, no. I mean, I would go so far as if there's somebody hot in this audience and I see them, I'll bring them back to my hotel tonight. And I mean, that's that's the way that I am. No, wait a second. She's and just saying she's just saying what a lot of people think, but are afraid to say out loud. Exactly. All right. Now let me ask you something. You're a young person. You've heard a lot of talk about the message of safer sex. Mm -hmm. You've heard about age. You've heard about sexually transmitted diseases. Right. And how do you feel about any of the above? I think that there's just a big uproar about it. Um, condoms, they protect you, yeah, but I'm a very firm believer in destiny, and if you're going to get AIDS or whatever, you're going to get it. And a condom or not, I'll use a condom, but if it's not handy and I'm in bed with someone, I don't use one. It's, it's not, I won't stop having anything that's going, I won't stop what's going on. <laughs> so what, so what you're saying, let's make sure we understand, so what you're saying is that you're, you're, the drive, the sexual urge, the lust? It overweighs anything. It, the drive for sex, to have sex, to have, to have sex with a man that I'm with, totally overrides any disease. A lot of people, when they hear about AIDS, think it can't happen to them. We've interviewed a lot of people on this right. show who thought it couldn't happen to them, and it did. A lot of them were heterosexual women. Are you, are you saying what? That it's, it's destiny if it happens to you? If it happens, it happens. Um, if I'm going to get AIDS, I'm going to get AIDS. If it's my destiny, the condom will break. So if, when my time comes, it comes, condom or not. That's, that's the way that I feel. Are you worried about putting any of the other potential partners at risk because maybe you've slept with somebody? I wouldn't want to purposely put somebody at risk. I've been tested and I'm negative. But um, if somebody meets me and they come to bed with me after just meeting me and they don't use a condom, they know what they're getting into. They, they know the risks that they're taking. I'm not endangering their life any more than they're endangering mine. Right. Before we talk to Rachel, there's a lot of reaction in the audience. Hands went up almost immediately. I don't even know where to start over here. I think your hand went up first. Why? I just want to say that there's no hunt involved in getting a man into bed, at least most men, and that you just are ignorant and you have a problem with yourself because you, don't, you just don't I care. I don't have a if problem. You don't wanna, if you don't care about yourself, then that's fine. But what about the people that you so sleep with? It's not so much that I don't care about myself. And as far as endangering other people, if a man wants to use a condom, I won't tell him I'm not going to have sex with you without a condom. He can use a condom. If it's not there, I'm still going to sleep with him. That's the way that I All am. right. Now, wait a second. Wait a minute. Let me, let me get Rachel, because Rachel, you're, I mean, you're just like ready to pop out of your skin there. What are you, what are you, what are you thinking when you listen to this? I, first of all, I'm, I'm stunned. I, we're, we're all in the same, many of us here are in the same age group, and we're all 
I, I'm stunned. I'm literally stunned. I'm sitting next to someone that has a very serious problem. This has you have a problem. You have like I virginitis or something. No, I listen to you. I listen to you. All right. You. Wait a second. I think I, I listened to what you had to say. You know, okay, do the I'm same. Sorry. First and foremost, this is an issue that is so unbelievably important that to d to d I, I'm, ab I'm literally stunned at the fact that you have yeah. no more self-esteem than to be doing this because that's what it comes down to. There's a, there's a much deeper problem going on here than, than promiscuous behavior. It's a manifestation of something much more serious. Before we talk about her self-esteem, because she's got a lot of company, the latest studies uh, show that people are having more sex you in the last three it. years since the advent of the AIDS crisis than ever before, so she's not the only because one. Because they're all believing the same myth. First of all, it isn't a big deal. People really aren't dying, and it is never going to happen to me. Now, why do you think differently? Because it does happen to people. It happens to people that I know. Every, I've seen it every day of my life. I work with people who are sick with the disease. I'm a, I'm a model, and I see it every day, every single day. And your behavior not only puts you at risk, it puts me at risk. How because does it we, put you at risk? It puts me at risk, and it puts that young lady at risk, and it puts the that guy in the back. The husband or the man that you're in bed with should have enough sense to use a condom and protect himself. You're completely I, contradicting yourself and saying... Wait a minute. He can use a condom. I, I don't make him use a condom. If he catches AIDS because he did not have a condom or because I did not supply a condom to him, that's his fault. So what you're telling he me went is to that bed you with, don't yes, have any what responsibility I'm you. whatsoever I'm telling you that sense. I don't have the responsibility of carrying somebody else's life in my hand. You're, no. But you do. You do. Because we're, in a, we're living in an era where people are All dying right. as a result right. of that attitude. We're that living attitude in an era of people who are death. paranoid about AIDS. They're paranoid. All right, you say they're paranoid. I mean, again, the statistics say that you're wrong. Right, I mean, there are people right. dying. People aren't paranoid. I may, may be thought of as someone who's paranoid, but I'm going to live to have children. I'm going to live to have grandchildren. Well, who's to and say I, that I'm not? Why risk not? All right. Why risk Rachel, it? Rachel, I talked... I talked about the fact you had a dramatically different reaction to what you see in your profession, what you right. see about AIDS. Right. What is your right. reaction? My reaction to what I see? Well, your reaction or personally, your own personally, behavior. I am, I am a virgin. I am. And I'm a virgin by choice. And if my, if my moral structure would not keep me from having sex, then AIDS most definitely would. Because I, I have two friends who are now dead as a result of heterosexual promiscuity. As a result of this same attitude, well, I didn't use a condom, I didn't think about it, didn't really matter. They're, they're not here. And I know that they wish they were here. They're not living, they're not breathing, nothing's happening, they're dead. Well, Rachel, they're I'm dead. very For sorry to hear minutes. that. No, 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 it's not, it's, but, not, it's not about no, that. No, no. We're talking about a few is, minutes Rachel, of, of excitement The thing is, to, to if cut they your life want to protect years. them life, their life, they could put a condom on. They a condom can do does that. not ensure that you're not going to get but, sick. Rachel, I'm not going to stop having sex, I think, and, it, and I wouldn't say that I have right. a problem because you have the problem. You're paranoid to have sex because of AIDS. No, I'm not. I'm a freer person because I can have sex and I can Let's enjoy Let's ask the myself. audience what they think about this. Let me see. Over here. Yeah. Okay, first of all, you said that, you know, you want to have children, but there are a lot of sexually transmitted diseases that are rendered you sterile. So when you decide in your life someday to have children, you might not be able to have that, right. that ability is, to be, do that. My point is, no, I'm I'm going, to, I have a greater chance of living I'm, long enough no, to no, have them. No, no, I'm talking them. to this one. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. And then also, I feel that for you, you have like low self-esteem. What you should do is go and visit an AIDS unit in a hospital that is a very slow, Absolutely. agonizing, painful death. And if you want to see that, I think you'd be a lot more careful. Okay, wait a minute. Let can me I just, respond to that? Yeah, go ahead. I'm well aware of what AIDS can do to a person in, and to a person's life, et cetera, et cetera. But what I'm telling you is that there's nothing wrong with sex. There's nothing Nobody wrong with having sex. Nobody is saying that there's sex. anything wrong with sex. Excuse me. What I'm telling it's you is that condoms will protect you, but ultimately, if you're going to get AIDS, you're going to get AIDS. All and right. I'm not going to stop having sex. I love to have sex. She and may I will not stop having to. sex. And she may not. I mean, obviously, I'm but not I the only one out there who's doing it. But I guarantee that by the end of today, it. by the end of this program, many people who are watching, we're going to think twice. Because the statistics are We can are hope you're right. All right. Wait a minute. Stand by me. Stand up over here. Stand up. Yeah. Yeah, first of all, I think she's a sick girl and she's oversexed. And she can't help it. And that's a problem. I don't think that's there's such a thing a as oversexed. Wait a second, though. She got applause when she talked about the fact that if she spotted somebody in this audience, did you applaud or not, some of you in the audience? There's no such that she, thing as Yeah, oh, come on. It's on tape. We heard it. Why did I hear applause and laughter? Stand up. 
Yes, I feel, I mean, I love sex just as much as, as anybody else, but I only have sex with one partner, and I feel you have no respect for yourself. Well, that's... You have no respect for other people because you're endangering other people's lives as well as it yours. It has nothing to do with respect. It it, it, a lot of the audience it, feels the same way. It has everything to do All with right. respect. Everything. Yeah. I think that, we, that kind of behavior, you know, is bad to society. You know, you're a very selfish person. If, if a lot of people like you stop doing that, then... Uh, the, uh, the spread of AIDS will be diminished. That's not true. Okay. That's not true I want, at all. But I want the men in this audience to think about one thing. If this woman came up to you and made herself available to you, would you all be so responsible? Would you? No? What? What'd you say over here? Stand up. I done been in the bed m more times than she is old, and I would never, ever do that today because not only can you get AIDS, sweetheart, there's other diseases that you can get that transmit into AIDS right. or something else. But the way that I am, it's, I'm sorry that society doesn't one, permit this. One thing this, that, that we're missing here is the fact... But it's still the way that I am. I like to have sex. She's real clear about that. Quickly, Rachel, yeah. It, 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 is, it is a deeper issue because the, the, the sanctity of our lives as people, everybody wants to stay alive, okay? I think this young lady does too. I think to be as casual about something that is deadly really denotes a deeper problem. Okay. Because for, for all of us, to, for you to sit there and say that it, it, if you get it, you get it. If you don't, Where you don't. Where did you get your psychology when you get degree? It, right. When you get it, I wonder because how that's going to feel. I just say, want to know. We're not doing on the air therapy here. The point is that she says she's been real honest about the fact she loves sex. She's going to keep on is, having I think sex. That I can be honest about it, and there's a lot of women out there. And who that's can't what we be. have to deal with. All right. All right. We're going to take a break. Next, a husband and wife who have had sex hundreds of times during their marriage with other people. They say they love their swinging lifestyle. Are they worried about AIDS? We'll find out next. <laughs> Bedrooms are jumping again. New studies say that millions of people have put aside their fear of AIDS and are more sexually active than ever before. Jim and Jenny have been married for five years, but they're more sexually active than most married couples because they engage in sex with a lot of people outside of their marriage. What's a lot of people, Jim? Oh, I would say over the last five years, anywhere between three to five hundred people. Whoa. Jenny's smiling. What about, what about you? Well, He's my partner, so approximately the same number. Of course, Jenny's bisexual, so then she ends up getting a little bit of additional yeah. benefits, too. Double the odds here. All right. <laughs> yeah. Now, we could spend the entire show talking about, you know, your lifestyle and, and being swingers, and, and that's not really the focus. But let me just ask you, Jenny, um, going into this marriage, were you open about the fact you like to do this? Oh, yes. It was part of our arrangement from day A, when we started dating. It was in the lifestyle. And it does, I have to ask this, because I keep thinking about the male ego, Jim. I mean, it doesn't bother you that your wife has sex with other people? No, it doesn't bother me at all. The thing about it is, is we believe in equal marriage. Not only does she have sex with other people, but so do I. And the uh, part of that is, is that uh, by knowing that uh, the relationship between her and I is secure, I don't have any jealousies. I don't have any problems with her having sex with other people fact of the matter is, is there's plenty of times where I encourage her. Okay. Um, sex is sex and love is love and there's a difference? Is oh, that what I'm, definitely. That's what I'm hearing? So it doesn't impact on the bond between the two of you? No, okay. there's too many things between us as far as our relationship goes that uh, are exclusive that uh, sex doesn't have to be an all uh, limiting factor with our relationship. Okay, now when you have sex with these other people, do you practice what's known as safer sex, which means using condoms, Jim? We don't use condoms. Uh, we do end up concerning ourselves with the aspect of sexually transmitted diseases, so I don't want to come across that it's a uh, item that we don't concern ourselves about, but uh, we end up educating ourselves to the point of where we don't feel that there's a particular risk associated with our activities and uh, condoms 
are not something that I we have end to up wanting. Why do you feel that there's no risk involved in your activity? We didn't say no. We said that the risk is small. Uh, um, there's, I've heard a lot of statistics being mentioned out here. The actuality is, is that the, the from CDC, the statistics suggest that um, heterosexual transmission is very, very small. Approximately 3% of all AIDS victims are transmitted heterosexually. We're going to have an Those expert with us AIDS later. AIDS is spread more through IV and drug use than through sex. Rachel? It isn't. It isn't. And the reason that the statistics... Yes, right. it is let's, let's look at Where something for a minute. Stats? What you're saying is... What you're, let me finish. What you're saying is that your sexual activity is somehow going, and, and the, the amount of sexual activity that you have has no bearing on the heterosexual community. I'm asking you What I'm going to tell you is that in let five me, years, let me cut this off. get your stats. Okay. Let me just say we could have battle of the statistics, and everybody always has numbers to prove their point, but here's the reality of the situation. When AIDS first started, it was, it was primarily seen as a gay disease, as an IV drug user disease, as a because disease that happened to poor people. It has now infiltrated the heterosexual community. There are entire that's, countries that's exactly that are heterosexual, correct. that their heterosexual population is being devastated Africa, by. the heterosexual population is being, why, I mean, you're smiling, but it could happen here. It could, it's but the potentiality of it is very, very extremely <clears throat> Limited. Low. Very, very low. Okay, so basically this is why you don't feel that you're necessarily in danger. Absolutely. Life is fraught with risk. I mean, you take a risk in driving down the freeway every day. Exactly. And but the thing about it is, is you have, so, all right, you have, then now the audience. You have to evaluate the risk associated with every action. All right, light went on in the audience here. AIDS, uh, though, is not like any other disease, uh, any other disease or a, uh, a car accident. It's a contagious disease. It's like a pyramid effect. It's 3% now, let's say, was correct what you said. In no time at all, it could in be 25 percent, then 100 percent. The it's lower is, now uh, than it was problem. previously. It doesn't matter. It's that's contagious. A, I'm sorry. I'm going to stop you. That's absolutely not true. It is. Exactly it is increasing correct. among the heterosexual community. Absolutely. You're, right. you're, you're entirely your correct. There was a statistic not too long ago that wanted to claim that amongst uh, 18 to 21 year old women, that AIDS had increased about 250 <laughs> percent. Could, However, no, we're, we're let's take around. a look at some of the numbers. Okay, You're let's not take a look at the numbers. The I, the I want to take a look at why you do what you do, okay? And here's what I want to ask you. If something as simple as putting on a condom might help you, exactly. why wouldn't you bother exactly. to do that? Because I end up engaging in sex for certain pleasures, and the condom detracts from those pleasures drastically. So you're risking your life and the life of everyone you, you come into contact with. So you feel Wait a little a minute. better for three minutes. All right, now do you, before you engage in this... Before you engage in sex with other people, do, I mean, is there any AIDS testing that's going on? We end up getting tested on a regular basis for all uh, sexually transmitted diseases about every six months. That's for our own, that's for our own um, co comfort level, though. Okay. Okay. I understand that Jim and Jenny have agreement, but in marriage, you have love. So if you love each other, why not protect each other? We do protect each other. It's just that we don't Not particularly feel that AIDS is a risk that we have to end up concerning okay. ourselves with. Over here, you want to lean in for me and stand up first. Yeah. I just want to ask the two of you, how long have you been living and breathing? Because the two of you seem to me personally to be two very naive people. Not hardly, but your perception might be such. We're not naive, and we're, we're both in our late 30s. You're, you're both what? In our late 30s. We're both in our late 30s, highly they're educated. They're not saying they don't know the risks that they're taking. They're, they're saying they they're don't saying, care. No, that's not what they're saying, Rachel. No, they don't they're care. saying no, that. No, but, say they're, but they're care. saying what a lot of people say again, which is, it won't happen they're to me. It happens to somebody else. They're not saying it won't happen to us either. They choose not to use a condom. See, you're acknowledging the, the it could happen that to they're you. With, I'm acknowledging it could happen to me. agree with this, or they wouldn't do it with them. It's a level of caring. It's a level of concern. Their concern is not what it should be as a community member. It's just not. Okay. We're sitting with three people that don't care but enough. But you don't know what their concern is. Their concern is their for concern themselves, is it, which is who they have to take care of. If the couples that they're with want to protect themselves, I'm sure they can do that. We they can do it elsewhere. We have plenty of concern, Whatever. not only for ourselves, but for all of our partners. You gotta, you, to is, add to her taking. comment, not only are you a naive, you don't have any respect 
for and how yourselves. do you define respect? No respect at all. Define no respect. respect. I have a lot no of respect, respect. All for right. a lot of the people that I end up engaging people with. People think that right. if you have a lot of sex or if you're having what they call promiscuous sex, you don't respect yourself. That's wrong. Why do you think people feel I that way? I respect myself because fully. They didn't but I'm a freer person. That. Excuse That's... me. I'm a freer person because I can say that I like to have sex, just like all you women out there like to have sex. And there's nobody that can tell me that there has not been a time in your life when you have not used a condom. Be honest with yourself, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Be honest. On that note, all right, hold on. Stand by, audience. Going to take another break. Next, a man who already has the AIDS virus, but it hasn't affected his sex life. He arranges what he calls safe sex orgies with as many as 300 men at a time. We'll be back. On Thursdays, Jane Whitney, a school teacher's worst nightmare. Locked up for molesting children, he spent five years in jail before he proved his innocence. How can you not be better about that? But his accusers still say he's guilty. It started in a little girl's bathroom. Admit it! It never happened. And I can say, I'm not afraid of you no more. You can't hurt me. You never me. had to be afraid of me. A must-see confrontation on Jane Whitney, Thursday. having more sex with more people than ever before despite the AIDS epidemic. Joining us now is Alan. He's already tested HIV positive, yet he's enjoying what's been called America's second sexual revolution. And that's because you arrange and participate in so-called safe sex orgies? Yes, we do. I run a group called the O Boys in New York with my co-founder, Marshall. Now in New York? In L.A. <laughs> okay. I'm in New York now. We're throwing a party in Washington. We're becoming pretty international. Now, let me ask, I mean, does that, it strikes me at least a little ironic in some ways that somebody who has the virus that causes AIDS would be promoting this kind of activity? People are going to have sex. People with HIV are going to have sex. People with AIDS are going to have sex, and there's no reason why they shouldn't. If people are taught the correct ways, the safer ways to have sex, I disagree, I'm sorry, with most of a lot of the people on the panel. You've got to use a condom when you're having penetrative sex. We insist on it. There are, everything we do is risky in the world. A seatbelt reduces the risk of a car crash. A condom reduces the risk of an illness. Okay, but you've got two to three hundred folks at these so at these parties are right ones, yeah. now are you saying you like walk around like the condom police and check that everybody's using a condom when we started the group there were 20 or 30 guys those tw a bunch of those guys are still together we monitor each other we have signs everywhere we have educational materials everywhere we provide condoms lube um, all of the things necessary to have a safer sex act. At this point, let me uh, let uh, Dr. Stephen Joseph, who is a recognized authority on the whole subject of AIDS, you've written a book, you were the former health commissioner in New York City. Uh, you're about to jump out of your skin at this hey, point. Well, I can't believe what I'm hearing. You know, the, the city's in flames, and we're here arguing about whether we should carry gasoline in a can this big or a gasoline in a can uh, that big. This is really uh, outrageous. Are you saying that nobody is going to have sex no, anymore? No, of that course, people, people, of course people have sex, and, and, and people can't be so frightened that we teach our kids that sex is bad. But the idea of, of mass, anonymous, repeated, unsafe sex being a good idea is insane. First of all, we do not have unsafe sex. Second of all, well, it is not you're anonymous not sex. Not safer sex. You're not secure and you're, you're, not, but you're being safer. What okay. is safer? Well, I think there's a number of little dream worlds going with. on here on the panel. We've got the dream world of you can have sex without condoms and it's perfectly okay and it's my life and I can do what I want with it. Uh, I don't think so. Well, On the other hand, we've got the don't have sex at all. Don't have any sex, go hide in a closet, repress yourself, drive yourself crazy with your sexual urge, but I I don't that'll keep crazy. your life better. All right, Rachel, let me just say something here. Why, why, is Rachel, why is virginity a dirty word right. here? I mean, Rachel seems to be very happy with this. Rachel, if it's like your choice to choice? not have sex at all, more power to you. I'm not I have talking. no problem with that, and I don't think anybody should. And I agree with you completely when you say that if someone is having unsafe sex, that that's, that's dangerous and wrong. I do think in some ways it's their choice because it takes two people to, to transmit a virus. It's, but it's you, know, gone, but but you can't go that. tell it's people gone in a room. Beyond, it's gone sex far with 200 that. people in a room or a swinging couple that doesn't protect themselves or anybody else is not the same but, as worrying about no sex or Dr. some Dr. Joseph, sex. you heard what you know, Jim and Jenny said. It's like they are at low risk. They acknowledge well, that the possibility... Her numbers are wrong. 
I'm not, we're not going to talk statistics on this show, Please but her God. numbers They're are wrong. wrong. The wrong. risks are enormous. This epidemic is going to be remembered a thousand years from now, and when people look back at this videotape <laughs> 200 years from now, they're not going to believe that people could talk with such insanity as we've yeah, heard. Yeah, and in years from now, they're going to look at them. It's not a matter of, of freedom or expression. It's a matter of a time of epidemic you can't when the most important thing. You can legislate morality. I said Dr. nothing Joseph. about legislating. You can't close down legislate. You can't every, pass laws. First of Prohibition all, doesn't work. Closing down places where people can gather and get information about sex and have right, sex in a safe environment. Let me give Rachel a chance. First of all, if I could, and I were in a position to do so, I would criminalize a lot of this behavior. Simply due to the fact that it's community, it's not right. acceptable and to the you're community. A fascist. I'm not a fascist. Yes. People are not. Exactly what you're talking yes, about. You're a People fascist. are not in control enough of their own lives to, to be concerned so enough about someone else. Oh. So so you and oh, the, gr the great sainted virgin Rachel <laughs> can pass down her. All right, all right, all right. Let me ask Alan if he. Dr. Let's say, let me ask yeah. Alan if he makes money, yeah. or has a commercial aspect to his orgies. The old boys have never have never made a profit in almost three years. But is of it a operating. commercial operation? It is not licensed as a not for profit what enterprise, but people make a contribution at the door and we provide them with, with well, the I'll space and the I condoms and the lube. If I were still health commissioner in this city and this That's was a commercial if you were still health commissioner and, and in let this me city, finish and if the it were same a commercial thing that happened operation. when you were health commissioner would happen. Yes, and, and you would be doctoring numbers and you would be cutting AIDS budgets. Oh, in lonely. 1986 you Absolutely. released a report. No, All right. In 1986, All right. Was correct. You were Excuse me, Alan. I'd like to get back to LA. I'd like to get back to the issue because it's an important okay. one. And it has to do with the fact... I'm sorry. ...that people are not heeding the message about AIDS. It's, it seems like... I don't want to... I mean, I was shocked when I was reading for this show about how people are having more sex, multiple partners. It's like people have suddenly just given up. They've said, it can't happen to me. And I want to ask you why you think that is, Dr. Joseph. When we come back, we'll be back. Adult films made just for women. Just admit it, it is pornography. Female erotica or just plain pornography on Jane Whitney Friday. If you work with your spouse and it's putting a strain on your marriage, please call 1-800-370-2712. Back talking about reckless sex in the age of AIDS, and I asked a question before we went into break about why, if people are so scared, why people think maybe it can't happen to them and they still have multiple partners, and you had something. Well, they're acting very irresponsible, and they're playing a dangerous game. It's like Russian roulette. That's the way you see it? That's the way I see it. Yes. It's Russian roulette. They're taking a chance. Then why do people keep doing it? Because they like the challenge. They like the dare, and they like that irresponsibility like that that's right that's what they like they about like the it. thrill what what, like what, what thrill thank you ma'am for the comment that's what melissa was talking about you like living on the edge exactly all right over here you want to stand up exactly i've spoken to some teenagers i have teenage children myself i have four children and these these teenagers feel that people in the 60s and 70s they had sex they had no problem the only thing you would really catch was gonorrhea okay or syphilis no, now these specific. children feel well, they, we, didn't, we didn't die, so they're not going to die. And that's irresponsible. It's, it's very irresponsible. Okay. Dr. Joseph, what do you think is the answer? I mean, it, it's very discouraging to see how people aren't paying. I mean, it's, now we're being told that this is the uh, naughty 90s right now. I think it's one of three things, and we've seen it here. Either they're so irresponsible, or they really just don't get it, or they're basically so afraid of the sexual issues that they're countering and doing uh, the, uh, the opposite things. And I seen, think we've seen all three of those things on the panel. All right. If that's the uh, situation you know, that you like to put forward, why is it that a lot of physicians nowadays are downplaying the dangers of AIDS and actually are upplaying more of the uh, You know, that's just uh, all false. And if we want to argue numbers and the science, I'd be happy to do that, but this is not the place to do that. No, we're not that what you say numbers. is just we're not taking true. A look, we're taking a look at medical professionals who are becoming less and less concerned about heterosexual transmittance of That's AIDS. That's not true. I think, I, I think I, in all of these issues, we need to look at the reality of what people are actually doing, what people are, are need to do. The sexual drive is a very powerful drive, and it's one of the things that make sure us is. human beings. 
I think we need to look at the way people are, are, are acting. Now, the old boys in L.A. are a group of people who like to get together in large groups and create a community where sexual freedom is acceptable, where people are not repressed about it, but where people are taught how to do what they like to do safely. I okay. think that, you know, whatever anybody wants to do is fine within reason, but understand have, the safety a issues. I have a Rachel, question about go ahead. This. It's ironic to me that, that you, as a community member, think it's perfectly all right to do whatever you want to do, and yet you expect taxpayers to pay for, the, for you and everyone else that's sick as a result of your, uh, mainly a result of your behavior. So what you're saying is, what you're saying is, it's perfectly okay for me as a community member to do whatever I want to do, but boy, when I get sick, that money better be there because I need the research, I need the technology, and I need to be taken care of. What? That's true. That's all true. But you have a responsibility to me and everybody in here, and that's to abstain from sex because it isn't right when you're risking your life he and everyone else's. I have no responsibility to you about what I do with my life because I'm not going to have sex you with you. Yes, you do. And it doesn't matter to me what you do. Now, if what I do, if I'm what I do matters, matters to you, then you can go sit somewhere and worry about me. Okay. Okay. I'm sitting here. I'm just worried about, about who's going to bear the burden if you get sick. Yeah. Who's going to take Absolutely. care of you? Who's going to pay the Absolutely. bills? You know, are you independ independently wealthy or what? I mean, I'm insured. There's a health system that should be in place for everybody, and ultimately, it will be. It should the be. It's not. If are there would be a about lot. This country. <laughs> hopefully in place in this country, hopefully. Hopefully, That's what we're but hoping you know. For. But I've got family, not. I've got friends, I've got a, a, a network, I've got my co-founder of the O Boys, Marshall, who's here, my mother is here. It's all a matter of supporting each other and what we want. But Whatever, not everybody any, has that support system. What's that? A lot of people don't have that support and, system. And, and the O Boys are creating and one. Are and organizations like us are those creating are the a support that need to system. Themselves the gay men's to worry community are we're more on top of the AIDS issue than anybody else. And now that the infection rate is, is skyrocketed and spread much further, people are looking to the gay to the gay male community for answers. Now, as part of the gay male community, as someone who's been active in sexual issues and sexual safety issues and AIDS issues, we we are here to say there's information out there, there's ways to protect yourself. If you're going to do something that's riskier, All right. there are things to learn to, to reduce those risks. Quickly, if you would. Okay, I would like to know why you're promoting sex if you already have AIDS. You know, you're risking other people's <laughs> life, because you know? sex is fun. Sex is, an, is, a, is a basic desire. Sex. There's no reason people should not be having sex. Just be careful about it. Do you let the people that you sleep with know that you're HIV positive? We have signs everywhere. To so say, they know? we tell people, so I'm they know here, what I'm into. here, I'm out, I'm HIV okay. positive. So the people know what they're getting into. People choose their own destinies. The people that die from sleeping with him knew they were taking the risk. I don't the people expect that people sleep to be dying. Me, well, I'll tell you, Melissa, I wish I could believe it was that simple, but I'm no, not going to buy it. Okay. All right. I mean, Bubs, sometimes Bubs, it's so good Bubs, I'm going to ask you, we're going to take a break right now. Folks, a break. Next, a prostitute who has a warning for married women. She says she may be sleeping with your husband, and he definitely doesn't want to use a condom. We'll be back. Meet the cast of Oliver Stone's new miniseries, Wild Palms. It's outrageous. Oh, what's happening to me? On Jane Whitney Monday. We'd like to hear from you. Send your letter in care of Jane Whitney, Columbus Circle, Post Office Box 20314, New York, New York, 10023. <laughs> Vanessa's a prostitute who works the streets of New York City. She says the fear of AIDS hasn't hurt her business. In fact, many of her clients couldn't care less about safer sex. Is that really true? Yes, it is. And they come to me, offer me extra money, and they don't want to use a condom. But you know what? They're going to have to use a condom because if you don't use a condom with me, you cannot have sex under any circumstances. As a matter of fact, if you'd like to have a photographed, you must wear a condom. <laughs> and these people that are sitting here, they're playing Russian roulette with their lives. And eventually, you're all going to catch a bad decision. You should be pointing to me, girl. <laughs> all right, now, wait, 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 wait. wait. Respect. There are people who, you know, you're out on the street. People say you're taking a risk, and yet you say every single time you will use a condom. 100% of the time. As a matter of fact, I was carrying condoms before I was having sex. I didn't have sex till I was 18, 
I was carrying condoms then before I even heard of AIDS. If you have sex without a condom in 1993, you're just... All right, let me find out nuts. about these, these men who come to you, and it's what, they offer, you say no, what, what happens? You say no, you have to use a condom, and what do they say? Well, I've been known to throw bottles at them, spin on them, and just tell them, you must get away from me. I don't even want to talk to people who don't want to use a condom. I wouldn't care what you offered me. You could sign over your Mercedes Benz to me, and I wouldn't do it. They're driving up in Mercedes? They're driving up Mercedes, BMWs, and Jaguars with marriage bands on their hands, gifts in their cars for their children. They're on their way home from work. They're going to their wives. And you know what? They couldn't care less about AIDS. All they want to do is get their cookies off. <laughs> Got applause on that, too. I don't get this. Uh, let me, <laughs> let me ask you. And horniness overrides condoms. They don't care. And if I don't want to do it, they'll just drive down the street and go and do it with another woman. They'll say, well, not only did I get a discount, I didn't have to use a condom. And I'll tell them, well, you know what? It's your funeral, pal. And if you wish to do that, you just go ahead and do that. But I'm not going to do that but, under any circumstances. But some of your colleagues are not, don't have that policy, and you're saying that the colleagues that I have that don't have the policy yeah. are all um, crackheads, people that have drug habits. The women that I work with out on the street who are other prostitutes, they use condoms because you know what? When I walk down to the parking place that I have sex at, I walk through a field of condoms, and that's how I know they're all using condoms. It's the ones that have drug habits and that are desperate and have maybe extra pimp pressure that might do that. Let me ask Dr. Joseph, Joseph if I could about, you know, talking about how this came into the heterosexual population. Is this one of the ways that we're talking about? Well, it was originally the drug users and then passed on heterosexually. I mean, oh, Vanessa makes a lot of sense to me. What she says makes a lot of sense. She is telling you the reality. That the, the other people that, that the other people are talking condom, about in, uh, that in fantasy. A condom does not prevent AIDS. All right, it helps it. Well, but you know, it depends whether it. you want to put five. But we've been talking about Russian roulette. It depends whether you want to put six bullets in the uh, chamber of the revolver or one bullet in the chamber of the revolver. And at least Vanessa is saying only one bullet. The, the rest of you are drinks, talking about uh, six. <gasps> six oh, oh, what? Oh, oh. Wait a minute. Have sex <laughs> what? I'm sorry. Whether you your term have sex. Your terminology you is. The only thing that you have is some pleasure. I walk away with crispy $100 bills that I use to support my family. You walk around with some pleasure. And you know That's what? That's right. You're going to catch a bad decision because you, no. know what? you are a full-fledged slut. That's <laughs> right. A slut is someone who enjoys sex and who is free with their body. That's what I am. You can boo, but you know what? It's 93, honey. Wake up and you know smell the coffee. You That's can't right. be promiscuous anymore. Okay. Go what? Having All right. For a, um, Bob I, I Roy. think we've got sluts calling sluts sluts here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> How much longer can we let this yeah, roll? We're going into a break. Okay. We'll be back. If you're going to be in the New York area and would like free tickets to our show, please call 1-800-771-2700. On Thursdays, Jane Whitney, a school teacher's worst nightmare, locked up for molesting children he spent five years in jail before he proved his innocence. How can you not be better about that? But his accusers still say he's guilty. It started in a little girl's bathroom. Admit! It never happened. And I can say, I'm not afraid of you no more. You can't hurt you never me. never had to be afraid of me. A must-see confrontation on Jane Whitney, Thursday. talking about more people having more sex than ever before in the age of AIDS, and you had something you wanted to say. Yes, I do. Um, first of all, I don't think this is a matter of enjoying sex. I think a lot of people enjoy sex. People want sex. It's a matter of being practical, realistic. The point is, would you put a blindfold on and walk in the middle of Fifth Avenue? That's what we're talking about, taking risk. When you talk about taking risk with AIDS, that's what you're saying. Put on a blindfold, walk up and down Fifth Avenue, and see how often you'll be hit by cabs. Our I mean, personal? really, this is what we're talking about. Sex is good. As far as the couple here, sex is good, sex is great. But you have to be responsible. You're risking other people's lives. Our personal physician this. is knowing Thank our you. lifestyle is more concerned about us catching hepatitis B, which there's a vaccination for, than he has AIDS. What we're basically looking at I'd get a second opinion, taking Jenny. Taking some responsibility, but using it along with the knowledge of the risk. Is that what you want to say? No? All right, we teach it. people that whatever risks you're going to take, 
there's a way to learn about how to minimize the risks. The old boys... Here, Alan, let me just tell you something, okay? Yeah. My concern is people hear what they want to hear, and when you're talking about a killer disease, they want to hear that it's not going to happen to them. And isn't it better to err on the side of education and trying to really inform people and even scare people a little bit right, if it's but necessary? When we, when we show people, when we demonstrate to people how they can have the sex that they want to have safely or as safe as possible, then they are Do you learning tell how them to protect they can get themselves. Sex, that they can get uh, AIDS through oral sex? We don't believe that you can, actually. Yes, you can. Oh, what do we do? Yes, you can. There have been, the, but, let me tell there you. There have been documented Our cases safe sex that they, that same piece Hold on, hold on. This is important, and, and everybody needs to know this. Right. Our Madden. safe sex Oral, rules are, anal, you do not, vaginal. you do you not exchange. Vanessa, please, thank you. You do not exchange bodily fluids at an oh boy party. You use condoms if you're having anal intercourse, and if you, and you respect the wishes of someone else. So if the other person the without believes condoms, you can get you you're safe? through oral transmission, then they will use a condom. All right. <laughs> oh boy, we're looking forward to it. You're going wanna, to get it. The, the model, Rachel, right. she's, she stated that she's lost friends, close friends, to this disease. And I want to know what would happen. Who, who got the disease, who contracted the disease, primarily through oral sex, in a heterosexual married yeah. relationship. I, I'd like to ask the people who are promiscuous, who are free with it and don't care about the disease, what they're gonna feel after they see a couple of friends buried. I've or have you, friend, have you, have you experienced that yet? I've lost a friend to someone who had only been with one partner. And oh, she- takes once. She, at one time, I know that, at one minute. but she used a condom with him. That's why I think if you're gonna get it, you're gonna get it. She used a condom I have and been, she's, she's gone. Been she's been, been gone for, years. for 10 years. Ten you years, yourself, you and I don't know a single time. person who has ever died of AIDS. You don't know a single person? This, and I hear all of this. Dr. Joseph, how would you respond to that? Is that a false sense of uh, complacency? I think uh, she's had a lot Absolutely. of odds break in her favor, but they're okay. not going to stay hey, that I've way for long. I've got HIV. So. I will probably contract AIDS at some point. And my life is going to be shorter than a lot of other people's. While I'm alive, I'm going to have the safest possible continuing sex that I can with people who know who I am okay. and what I do. Okay, I want to get to you, but you saw the sign. We've got to go into break, right? right. All right, we'll do that. We'll get to you when we get back. We'll be back. If you work with your spouse and it's putting a strain on your marriage, please call 1-800-370-2712. Go ahead with this. I just want to say to Melissa and Jim and Jenny, you've all been tested for AIDS and it's negative. Yes. Well, that doesn't mean that it's months. not there. You, it, studies have shown that you can have AIDS years. and it won't We're come out till later I'm on. Aware of I'm married 27 years to one man and I enjoy sex with him alone. You, you're a young girl. You should get out there and find somebody and make a life for yourself. I think she's pretty out there. <laughs> All right. I'm going to make a life for yourself as it is. But you raised the point of, again, how long, the incubation period on this disease? It's seven years. Well, it can be a long time, seven, ten years. Uh, but if you're infected, you're infected, and you can infect everybody else you sleep with or you share needles and I wanted to with. ask Rachel, Rachel, when you get married, are you going to continue to use a condom with your husband you know, to be throughout your you, married I'm really life? I'm concerned about marriage. I'm very concerned about the prospects of finding someone who is disease-free. So you're going to shining you're gonna, and, and a white horse? And it's not going to happen, It's darling. not going to happen. But, but, oh, wait a second wait, here. Vanessa, give it a rest. Will you, this woman, think, I mean, she's got certain standards. She's I trying to, to make a life. Something. Absence is the only way to secure not getting sick. So and I've had a very full, I'm a very normal, you know, person who has right. a very full life as a result yes, of I making found, that choice. I found a night. It happens. It does happen. Sick, but it sure is it's un it's like unfortunate, her. but I think 10 years from now, the only people that are going to be sitting on that panel is Rachel, Dr. Joseph, and maybe the one at the end that's, I think she's lying, but I'm not sure. I applaud you for, uh, I applaud you for uh, holding on to your virginity. Thank you. <laughs> All right. I'd like to leave my uh, number. <laughs> oh, now he put the pitch in. <laughs> you should leave him wanting more. Don't leave your number. All right, we're out of time. I want to thank you for joining us, the audience, our guests. Have a great day. We'll see you back here next time. Until then, take care. She's a weight loss guru who claims to know the secrets to slimming down. Is she for real? Watch Inside Edition at 4.30 on Channel 5. For a transcript of our show, please send $5 along with the program name, subject, and air date to Burrell's Transcripts, Post Office Box 7, 
Livingston, New Jersey, 07039. For a video cassette, call 1-800-4-VIDEO.